The Redmi Note 8 Pro fared quite well in my gaming test, but how does it fare in its main selling point, which is the cameras? Now we have a main 64 megapixel camera with an aperture of f1.8, and this can be binded down to 16 megapixels for a more detailed shot on a smaller screen. This is directly connected to a depth sensor, which has a two megapixel count with an aperture of f2.4, an ultra wide camera connected to a macro lens with an eight megapixel sensor, as well as a two megapixel sensor, respectively. We also have a selfie cam of 20 megapixels and guys this phone looks absolutely awesome on paper so without further ado let's go Okay, so just to let you guys know at the bottom left, I have the sensor that we are using. At the bottom right, we have a counter down to the end of the category that we're busy with, which is day picks. So I am pairing 64 megapixel ma main raw picks with a main binded pick of 16 megapixels after. And as you guys can see, we're also throwing in that ultra wide sensor after that too. Now the 64 megapixel looks great, but I do think that the AI that we can only use in the binded shot looks absolutely superb. It looks even better than the 64 megapixel camera when not blown completely out. You'll see what I'm talking about a little bit later when we compare it to the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. But for now, these ultra wide sensors don't look too bad. And with a lot of light in the background over there, it struggled a little bit, but with the light behind us, it takes surprisingly well detailed pictures throughout the board. Now you guys can see we have a 64 megapixel main sensor over here and comparing it to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, this is 12 megapixel count. It's not all about megapixels and you can see that the Galaxy Note 10 does look slightly better. But when you go and zoom into the shot yourself, you guys can see that that 64 megapixel holds on quite strong because of the level of detail that it is actually capturing, which is really awesome to see. So we're going to continue with the test over here, going from our main 64 megapixel into binary shots and then we're gonna go into ultra wide as well guys I must say that the ultra wide does look a little bit blown out but the 64 megapixel counter does also look a bit blown out this is not a perfect day here in Beijing we do have slightly blue skies though there is quite a fair bit of pollution so that doesn't help either but those 16 megapixel AI binded shots look absolutely stunning I must say I couldn't be more pleased with them and I think that they are very well on par with what we have seen with the IMX 586 sensor from Sony which is a 48 megapixel sensor you shouldn't do see too much of a difference between them and I'm really interested to see what Sony have to offer with their 64 megapixel when it releases. So now we're going to go straight into zoom. This is two times zoom. This is digital, not optical, since we don't have a telephoto lens over here. Going into three times doesn't look too bad. Five times you guys can see that we're starting to lose some detail. Ten times looks absolutely terrible. This is actually a picture from my apartment building. Then we're going to go from ultra wide into a main bind shot over here of 16 megapixels. And now we're doing that two times zoom again. Remember guys, this is all digital zoom. Three times zoom zoom once again and then we go into that five times and I must say that the clock still doesn't look too bad if you ask me even at 10 times the zoom though not better than anything else I've seen around now if we use our main camera our binded pick it doesn't look too good but when we throw in macro when close to a subject it looks absolutely incredible it is like night and day I cannot say tell you guys how awesome having a macro camera is though I'm not sure how often you're actually going to use it unless you get really close up to your subject now we're looking at this flower over here and we're getting a natural bow effect at the background over there but when we do use that binded shot plus the depth effect camera you guys can see that there is a slight extra blur over there now this mini cooper looked nice and clean you don't get many of those here in china but when we use that depth shot i'm actually really surprised that we're actually getting a portrait depth shot with massive objects like that car and this bike as you guys will see in a second over here though it looks a little bit strange how we do have that flag that is like edge detection is not working too well in its favor then with these little statues over here the depth effect looks absolutely awesome with the boy to the right over there and moving on to another statue over here just to show you guys some more edge detection and depth effect over here with another object I've never seen a phone take a better depth effect shot with objects though when it comes to people I cannot say that much to it because I've never seen such a shady camera take pictures of myself now moving on to the video department we are limited to 4k at 30 fps we don't have 4k at 60 fps so we do have 1080p at 60 fps we'll get on that in a second now I do say raw at the bottom left corner over there and that is because that was shot at 4k since this is a 4k video but we have upscaled this full hd 30 fps clip over here which is 1080p because we are running a 4k clip and this is 1080p footage now we're going to go into the main selling point of the video camera over here and that is full hd 60 frames per second and it looks really good though i must say it is quite wonky there is no sense of stabilization in here whatsoever not even electronic stabilization even though they mentioned that there is it doesn't really feel like it when we come into slow-mo we do have that 
HD, which is only 720p at 960 frames per second. I would never think that we would get 960 FPS in such a budget friendly phone, but the quality is really shady. And when comparing it to the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus with the same FPS and the same 720p that we do have there it looks pretty similar i guess i think the samsung is slightly better and unfortunately even at 120 fps slow-mo we are still limited to 720p it would have been cool to see that at 1080p so moving on to night uh the 64 megapixel camera is only really good in daylight scenarios so scrap that idea if you guys thought that that would work so we're going to use that bonded shot and with night mode on it doesn't make too much of a difference but ultra wide looks absolutely terrible Moving on to another picture over here, you can see night mode off and we're going to shoot onto night mode on. You can see the colors look a little bit better, but the shot isn't that much brighter if you ask me. And we're taking a look at this little sign over here and things don't look so good. But when we go into night mode, like I said, tiny bit brighter, tiny bit more color, but nothing to write home about. Now looking on the street with a little bit more light around us with night mode on, you guys can see that the lights are blowing out the shot a little frantically less over there, but ultra wide still looks absolutely terrible. And when you take pictures of me over here, things do not look good at all at night, especially with night mode on. I don't know what's going on with that Redmi. Okay, so guys looking at video footage in the evening, uh, 4K 30 FPS, obviously 1080p 60 FPS is gonna be the highlights over here. Remember full HD that we're on now is upscaled once again, and it looks absolutely terrible at night. Uh, hopefully this gets changed with a software update, but the 60 FPS footage doesn't look that bad if you ask me. So we're gonna go ahead and move away from the night scenarios and go into the selfie over here. So we have a 20 megapixel selfie, which is increased from the 13 megapixel snapper that you guys have seen on previous Redmi Notes series phones and things look pretty good with regular photos and with the bokeh effect i'm pretty pleased with it so guys i let me know what you think i think it's capturing quite a lot of the detail inside my beard and i can't wait to show you guys what the video is like using that 1080p selfie cam so here we go hey guys this is tech Nick shooting a 1080p 30 frames per second selfie video on the redmi note 8 pro unfortunately we have a max resolution of 1080p and a max frame rate of 30 frames per second here but i must say it looks absolutely fantastic i can see the quality grains in my beard perfectly fine and this is also a mic test so let me know what you guys think of the mic quality of the redmi note 8 pro 2. so guys this is some evening footage that we have i just had took two pics over here because they don't do much justice even with portrait mode and the video footage at night looks okay but you can't really see what's going on so i wouldn't really suggest it but guys overall the redmi note 8 pro has been a pleasing phone to take snaps with things look nice and constant and come out crisp and clear and until next time guys this is technic